What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great, great day. It is finally freaking Friday, and I hope that your Friday and weekend dreams are going to come true. And I'm actually wearing my, my salute to service hat that I got from my buddy Daniel Hernandez. Yes, we're going combat. Yeah, it, it's I actually need to get like a, 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 a army helmet because we, we, we up in here, it's, it's like war with some of you guys out here. Some of you guys, you would think that I actually make the decision calling for the Dallas Cowboys because some of y'all coming right at me, you know, and I'm dodging bullets left and right. The haymakers are coming at me and all that. So this morning when I was on driving, I was driving all over the place, man. I've been all over the place getting back here to bring you guys the best news on the NFL. And in two hours from now, I'll be having Game Time Brian and Space Cowboy joining me for a roundtable discussion on what the hell is going on with the Dallas Cowboys. So here's what I got when I was riding. I was listening to some Get Up this morning because I was fortunate enough that I could actually get up. And th this is like deja vu to me. Let let's listen in. Rooms all over the Dallas Cowboys and their quiet offseason. Dak entering right now the last year of his contract, due for a cap hit of a 54, excuse me, 55.4 million dollars. And so we were just sitting around this morning, just you know, just just in our meeting, this group of people, and and we were you were waxing rhapsodic about the pro day that Michael Penix Jr., the quarterback from Wisconsin, excuse me, from Washington, had yesterday, in which despite mm -hmm. the two ACLs, he had two ACLs numbers in the oh, forty. Sign him for the Cowboys in the jump and everything else. And and I said to you, if there was no injury history with him, where would he get drafted? Top five, top six. That, that, that's, that's I think if what most there was no believe. injury. And so he's got bird legs like Carson model, Wentz. If you're the Dallas Cowboys and you really want to make things interesting, picking in the late 20s in the first round of this year's draft. No calves. What Look at that. might you consider doing? Take Michael Penix, and here's why, Greeny. Last year, Deontay Banks with the 24th pick averages roughly $3.3 million. So if the four of us were running an FLT, we would all say that Dak Prescott is a better quarterback than Michael Penix today. But if one's making $55 million a year and one's making $3.3 Think about all the other players that just walked out the door, most notably someone like Tyron Smith that could be a Dallas Cowboy. And if Michael Penix stays healthy, his ability is not really far away from Dak Prescott, and we could save roughly $52 million a year <laughs> for the next four years. You also, it's it just sort of running the Aaron Rodgers play, right? You've got, you've got okay. Dak there for the year. Okay. Let, let Dak play unbelievably well and we win the Super Bowl. Then we'll worry about it. That'll be yeah. a great problem to have. Yeah. We have Michael Penix sitting there. And, and, but, but otherwise, he gets to sit for a year, as we think a lot of rookies would benefit from doing. No one is suggesting it's what's going to happen, mm -hmm. but it is sort of an interesting little... Okay, here's my question. He, he, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Here's my question, because, you know, this isn't the first show that I've seen say this about the Cowboys, that the Cowboys should draft Michael Penix. Forget that they don't have a running back. Forget that they don't have a left tackle. Forget that they gave up a number four pick where they overpaid to bring in Trey Lance. I thought Trey Lance was the heir apparent. We're already talking. We've already given up on Trey Lance. We've given up on Trey. Is that, do I have it right? Do I have it right? But you know what's funny? See, we are sitting in a very historic place. I, you know, I, I love this house. This house has become uh, ingrained in part of me. You know, I, I almost want, can I get you buried in the basement, baby? Okay. Now, but seriously, the, you know, I think about if these walls could talk, the, it would be haunted. Um, but it's historic. It's 204 years old. Okay. And my wife just literally popped her knee out here. So that's some more history that just happened while we were on here on March 28th. Her knee just popped out. Boom. Okay. So that's part of the history of the house. And see, the great thing about history is history actually repeats itself. And it was funny because, see, I like it. This is what's great about today. When I grew up, we had to go use the damn Dewey Decimal System, find a book, read the book. I, I know y'all don't even know how to read anymore. Read the book. And that's if you could find a book and it wasn't checked out. 
to find out information. But now everything's right here at your fingertips. And you can go back and look at everything because it lives online. Now, here's an interesting one here for you. Four years ago, four years ago, we were right where we are right now. They were talking about Dak Prescott. Cowboys need to move on. They should move up and draft a guy. I don't know. It, it, let's listen in to Doug Gottlieb. You know, the Dallas Cowboys are a team that are talked about on every radio show, local and national. Yeah, and y'all love it. clearly have a talented roster. Talented. And if you look at gross stats, the number one offense in the National Football League. Mm -hmm. They have a quarterback who, by anyone's estimation, however good you think Dak Prescott is, Dak Prescott, Dak Prescott has been underpaid by the team during his NFL career because where he was selected in the draft. And if you know about the old collective bargaining agreement, the old one. The old that there was. It wasn't that the Cowboys didn't want to give money. Money. There was no opportunity to pay him any more money than he was already being paid. So he made it up in endorsements. So the Cowboys, well, they want to re-sign Dak. They want us to re-sign Amari Cooper. They can't franchise tag Dak if they want to franchise tag Amari Cooper. If they franchise tag Dak, Amari Cooper could potentially walk out the door. And then, of course, you have Byron Jones, some other players they want to re-sign, and then they have to fit it all within the magical salary cap structure. Mm -hmm. Then I heard this from Tua Tavailoga. Of course, many people's number one player in the draft coming into the season, a season in which he was having a great year, but he suffered through an ankle injury and then injured. a really devastating hip injury that he's recovering from now. Okay, so I, I want you to understand this is not a one-for-one. Okay. Go on. This is not a one for one. And what happens with trades a lot of times is we think of just players and trades and how all that works, but there is the magic of salaries. Let's just say let's just say that Detroit says, Hey, we have to win, we have to win now. We would love to draft Tua, but we'd like to get a bunch, a bunch of assets in this draft. Mm -hmm. And we could trade that number three pick to the Dallas Cowboys. You want to include Jalen Smith? We'll take your star defensive uh, oh, okay. star linebacker. You want to include a couple more picks? Sure. This year's first rounder, next year's first round pick. Now, what? I'm not saying you trade Dak Prescott. I'm saying you let Dak Prescott potentially walk. Right? And here's the logic behind it. If you can pull off a trade. Oh, wow. You to it to Vyloga, one, you could be better off in terms of his ceiling. Now, a lot of this depends upon his hip. But as, as, as good as Dak Prescott has been, it's a surprise how effective he's been in the National Football League. Hmm. Whereas Tua, if wow. you ask pundit upon pundit upon pundit upon analyst upon analyst, they may say, well, he's gotten hurt in college because he's tried to run. He's not as athletic as maybe advertised. Okay. Everyone says he's bright. He's obviously a very good leader. Mm -hmm. He's tough. He's smart. He's incredibly accurate. Mm-hmm. And if you want to tell me that Dak Prescott's awesome, that's fine. I saw him against the Philadelphia Eagles on the road. And you can, you know, the Cowboys fans will say, well, you know, they don't have very good defense this year. Okay. They didn't okay. in 2020. We'll in uh, they but didn't. I should point they out didn't. that it wasn't the defense that scored nine points against the Eagles. It wasn't the defense that scored on the opening drive of the first half and second half against the Bears and, and couldn't move the ball outside of that. It wasn't the defense, granted, uh, it was in a monsoon, but the defense didn't score nine points against the Patriots. The offense lit up the Redskins. The offense lit up the Rams. These are not mm -hmm. playoff teams. The Giants. Mm -hmm. The offense lit up the Redskins, the Giants, the Dolphins. They beat up on mm -hmm. the bad teams, and against the good teams, mm -hmm. there was a struggle. There was a struggle. Some of it had to be play coaching. Same problem. Some of it had to be coaching. But some yeah, of it coaching. had to be quarterback play. Some of it. And then when you factor in the money you would save. The if money. you simply move Dak Prescott, potentially, oh. let's say, 32 to $36 million off the books, whatever that looked like in the salary cap, the number three spot, oh. like Quinn and Williams last year, right? It's like $8 million a year. Okay. It'd be nine million probably this year. Wow! You think about it. If you're going to save twenty million dollars, potentially getting as good or a better quarterback, better better than Dak, you take that risk. You take you take that risk because the Dallas Cowboys are a talented team. Dak yeah. Prescott statistically had a good year. Yeah, and all it got you was eight wins. Eight wins. If Jerry Jones wants to tell the world that he's a gambler, that he's a gunslinger. 
He's an old cowboy that he's willing to take risks. Okay. Why not take that risk? Why not? Everyone's been, you've been, you can easily be critical of the Cowboys not pouncing on the opportunity they had over the past couple years when they had a quarterback okay. who was classically underpaid. Does that sound familiar? Because, see, history is repeating itself right now, friends. So, hypothetically, tank for Tua. You, you guys remember, tank for Tua, tank for Tua. Okay, so Tua, Tua, okay, um, drafted in 2020, 1,814 yards, 11 TDs, 5 interceptions. Drafted, uh, excuse me, uh, 2021, uh, 2,600 yards, 16 TDs, 10 interceptions. 22 was his really first good year, his third year. Uh, 3,500 yards, 25 TDs, 8 interceptions. And last year, having the cheetah, um, his best season, and he didn't have the injury problems. Uh, that he had the concussions the year before where he missed um, a lot of time uh, because of injuries, which is injury issue. So right now um, we're talking about getting Penix. Let's go get Penix. Yeah. Who's got ACL and hip problems. And mind you, to get there, to get Tua in 2020, the first round pick we had was CD Lamb. Mind you, the first round pick that we had in 2021 was Micah Parsons. So I ask you honestly, looking at this, would the Cowboys be in a better position right now had they saved the money on Dak Prescott's contract, got Tua? without a CD and a Micah Parsons on the defense. Because in all, this is what we're talking about. When we talk about saying, let's draft another quarterback and start all over, you know, unless you are really, really bad like the Bears, you're not getting there without giving up draft compensation. I'll give you, hey, I would love to have said, hey, we could have given away Jalen Smith. That would have been good. Hey, there you go. But when you start talking about number one draft picks, the Cowboys build their team by number one picks. If we're giving away multiple ones for one guy, and mind you, I want to, I, I know you're not going to believe this, but each year, with the exception of 2020, where Dak didn't play the whole season, Dak blew those numbers out the water. Dak blew those numbers out the water without having all of the weapons that the Miami Dolphins had. So, Wade, this is the argument right here, bro. This would have been a real sample, or this is where you can actually see what it really would have been like when one of the talking heads literally said, the Cowboys should just let Dak walk and move up and draft Tua. I'm not going to say Tua has been bad. I'm not. Tua has been a good quarterback. But is he worth a couple of players and several picks for the Cowboys to move all the way up to get him? I don't think so. Not when you have problems. And see, here's the thing right now. So if we're talking about let's take our number one pick and draft a quarterback – when we need an offensive lineman, when we truly, we, we know, we know, we know that we need a running back, as you know, Colin Cowherd pointed out, that having a running game for the Cowboys is butter as far as winning, and I'm about trying to win. And we already gave a fourth-round pick for Trey Lance. And if you're going to say to me, hey, we're going to roll with Trey Lance because he was a number one pick and things like that, uh, okay, fine. I, I, I see that because it's not costing me an offensive lineman that will help him and a running back that will help him to try and make him successful. But if you're telling me that we're not going to get help for those two places of need and we're going to bring in another quarterback, are you crazy or just plain stupid? Wow. All right, good people. I will see you in less than two hours. Peace.